Okay, so today we're going to fly the Antonov AN2, and this is where we're at. Really don't want the radio, do we? It's hard to get, uh, sometimes you just can't get the airport icon to light up. But we're at uh, Balakta in the north of Russia. And we're going to more than likely just fly locally around. And we've got like four checkpoints we're going to fly to. We might hit them all. We might just stay a little bit closer to the airport because the weather's not the best out there right now. But uh, we'll do a uh, we'll do a start up here um, and get the uh, AI to read off the um, startup checklist for me. Hopefully we can get this girl started. It's so cold out here today. Good grief. Gonna go ahead and turn the battery on. Now, prior to the uh, checklist, but uh, yeah, just to check, see what we got going on here. Controls outside are just banging against each other. It's so windy. Okay, Jesse, if you want, go ahead and. Start. Okay, let's start the engine startup checklist. Here we go. Battery switch on. It's on. Which is on. Fuel shut off. Lever in the up position. It's in the up position. Pneumatic valve on. Fuel selector switch in the up position. It's in the up position. Nav lights on. They're on. Anti fire switch on. That is the second row, fourth switch. It's on. Engine gauge switch. Fourth switch right of the battery. It's on. Propeller to high. It's a high. Mixture back. It's back. Fuel pump handle. Pump 12 pumps. It's already been primed. Primer. Seven pumps. It's been pumped. Magneto switches one plus two. One plus two. Start engine master switch in the on position. It's on. Hold 
the starter switch to the left. Look for eight pounds of pressure and then switch to the right. Master switch in the off position. Alternator switch on. Left of the battery switch. It's on. Yellow inverter switch on. It's on. Upper panel, all on. All on. Nav lights, all on. They're all on. Cow flaps adjusted as needed. They're all set. And that's the end of startup checklist. Let's go fly it. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and... Uh, oh, geez. I guess I better go shut the door, huh? Hmm. You gotta sneak all the way back here, flat against this door, just to see the handle. There it is. There we go. Let's get back up front. Okay. Now I think we can taxi out. Oh boy, it's slippery. Good grief. Yeah, it's icy out here. She's sliding all over the place. So this is going to be an interesting takeoff. Number one, because there's ice. And two, we got some good wind out here, as you can see. Coming from our uh, left side. So I want to get up, I want to get lined up really nice here. And I think I'm going to leave the tail skid unlocked. Just so I got a little bit more control. Okay, we'll put one notch of flaps in. 
and here we go. And we're off. We got positive ray of climb. So we dumped the flaps already and we're trimming. And let's narrow the map down a little bit here. We don't want to climb too high today. See if we can get her trimmed down a little bit. Not looking bad. Wind is wanting to push the nose up right now. So we should start swinging around here to the right. I guess we can. We're going to look for this river up here, it should be right up here, and we'll go ahead and uh, start making a right turn and kind of blend, blend in here to the course. Not a very long flight. The, uh, the AN-2 is, is an incredible airplane, I don't know. Everybody's ever been in one or close to being around one, but they are massive. They're so big. The first time I was around one, I was I was really literally shocked how big the plane is. And then when you get inside of it, it's just it's so basic. I mean, there are some that are plushed out, but majority of them are just basic and uh, and then the cockpit is is like just being in a giant greenhouse it's just full of glass but the visibility as you can see I mean it's just got tons of the visibility all right so anyway, we crossed over that stream. We'll go ahead and start making our little right turn here. Kind of get on course. But the A and two, it was it was utilized for so many things in Russia and other uh, countries over in the, the eastern part of Europe. It was used for a lot of agriculture, crop dusting, you know, hauling equipment around, uh, so many, so many purposes for this airplane because of what it could do. I mean, it's just rugged. And then, of course, the military had it, and they used them to haul troops, mainly. Uh, it didn't have any kind of access doors that you could throw, you know, equipment in, heavy equipment in. So it was, it was basically a troop carrier, uh, especially paratroops. It was a great plane to jump out of because of the speed. Uh, the jump, you know, from what I understand, the, the parachuters that used to love to jump out of these <coughs> loved it because it was 
it wasn't a bullet going across the sky and they just get blown out the back end. So they really did enjoy jumping out of this plane. But uh, there is still hundreds and hundreds of these over in uh, Europe. Just a lot of them. And, but there's a lot of them that aren't flying. They're, they're there, but, but they're not flyable. And then, from what I understand, uh, the Soviet military was going to utilize the uh, AN-2 as a drone, a pilotless aircraft, um, because they were so expendable right now, because they got so many of them. They thought they could just go ahead and drone them up, fly them as a drone, deliver uh, explosives with it, crash it, whatever. I don't know if that ever occurred or not. I was I was never able to verify that. I haven't heard any stories of A and twos being, you know, crashed on purpose with explosives in them. So I don't know. But would I would I buy one of these? Yes, I would. I would love to have one of these. Absolutely love it. Whoops, wrong way, what am I doing? These two guys, yeah, we want those. And I got my, I got my, my uh, cowling flaps. Uh, they're kind of halfway open right now, and then the, uh, the uh, upper uh, engine cow flap upper engine cow flap. I've got it closed because it, it, it's plenty cold outside. It's not going to overheat. And the gauges are all looking good, so. But and as you can see, you can utilize skis. You can put floats on them. Uh, of course, wheel. It's not the fastest airplane in the world. There's no question about that. But this plane will fly super, super slow. I mean, you could put all the flaps down, and then right around 40 knots, the forward slats will start kicking in on the leading edge of the wing, so it gives you a little bit more stall capability. But you can just you can just fly this thing creeping above the ground with full flaps on it. It's incredible how well it will fly. Aerobatic wise, guys do aerobatics in them. I don't think I would. And a lot of guys have gotten in trouble. A lot of guys have died doing the aerobatics in this plane. It wasn't really designed for that. Will it do a roll? Will it do a loop? Yes, it will. And on the simulator, yes, it will. I've done it. Uh, but you better be at altitude, number one. And number two, you've got to utilize every control you got. You got to work the throttle, the rudder, the ailerons all, all at the same time. It does not do the prettiest barrel roll you'd ever want to see. That's for sure. So it's interesting to see these Russian. Uh, our uh, countryside up here in the northern part of Russia. A lot of uh, a lot of little small uh, towns, which what I would call towns, they're not cities. But my God, they're way up here. I'm really having a 
kind of counter the wind up here. It's really blowing. It's going to be interesting landing. Okay. So here's the airport we're going into. That says Molochoni Airport, I think. Chone, Chone, Chone. Not really sure. It's a very small strip. It's only 1,400 feet, so I'm hoping we can get stopped at the end with the skis on. We'll see. And there she is, right down there, off my right wing tip. Very small community. It looks like, it looks like they've got the runway cleaned off, so I might land right beside it, parallel to it. Check it out. Start our downwind. And I really got blown over. <laughs> wow, I didn't plan for that very well. But we'll dial it in here. Yeah, that wind kind of kicked me over a little too far. Tell you what, I'm going to make a low pass here. I think I might want to come in this direction. Take a look and see if he's got a windsock down here. If it feels like to me that wind is like almost in my face. Let's see what we got. to come in that way. The opposite way I was planning on coming in. Because that wind is just quartering coming down the, the active. Alright. 
get her upwind going here. That wind's really pushing us. That's kind of how I, I kind of felt like I was being when we were coming upwind last time to the airport. It felt like we were really being pushed hard. So I thought, you know what, I might be setting up for the wrong direction here, and I was. So we're going to come in this way. So we're basically downwind. Put a uh, we'll put some more flap in. Probably hear the slats kick in here shortly. Probably on final. Totally lost it. Lost the airport. I lost it. Wow. There's my slats kicking in. I wanted to try to get as low as I could for the approach, but I got myself too low, and then the wind blew me down a lot farther downwind than I wanted to to uh, go. So now I'm fighting a pretty strong headwind. see how easy it was to lose it. This uh, woods here is higher in elevation and it's it kind of really hit the uh, runway when you're that low. And I was, I was pretty low back there. So I'm going to put it down to the right of the runway because of the skis. Nice wind blowing here. Just pushing us off to the right a little bit.
Yep, just coming off the left a little bit. It's not bad. Hey, it's pretty cool looking everywhere. Whoop, that was a heck of a bounce. Wasn't too bad, but. Guys are just kind of waiting around to see where I'm going to park. They're not really directing anything. up and we'll bring push the uh, mixture forward which is kind of funny because it's just the opposite of what we do prop back and we always bring the fuel valve to the back position as well and we'll turn the battery off Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the startup procedure. If you follow that, uh, you, you can get her cranked up. So, okay. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you all later.